has flaws. The truth is, all these belief systems have flaws. Uh, so some have less flaws than others. Did you ever go to a mosque? Yes, I did, actually. I visited a mosque twice. Uh, <clears throat> so we are back. Let's make tonight interesting. Let's sort of shoot out one hour tonight. We always say that. We typically go for like two or three. But yeah, it's uh, 8.58. We'll give it a try. Guys, if you just hopped on, like this live just to get more people. It's a tactic to get good dialogue. Invite your haters, right? Those that annoy you, that, uh, you know, let them annoy me. Regarding religion, I mean, and reasonable people. Don't, don't bring nutty people here. Isn't it interesting how religion draws nutty people to them? Ah, ah, I got to, ah, <laughs> The stupid band on my arm. Hold on. I just came from a breath meeting. I don't know if you guys know what that is. There you go. Well, Breck is uh, the Republican National Committee. That's something I do on the side. I am a uh, precinct committeeman. A precinct committeeman, yeah, for the Broward, uh, Broward County. Republican National Committee. Yeah, so um, isn't it interesting that religion draws nutty people? Which is sort of a good thing. Because uh, nutty people are essentially those you need to pacify and sensitize. Uh, very masculine people also have to be somewhat sensitized to a certain extent. right? This is why men need to learn from men. right? Um, but yes, religion draws a lot of crazy people. And... Uh, which is which is fine, but I don't know if these are the type of people that we should parade when they come to religion. Because if they didn't come to your cult, they'll probably go to another one. But um, I want the thinkers in here. Not watching. Crazy people could watch. But I want reasonable, logical people who can dialogue, you know, to try to get on. Because, um, as they say, when elephants play, the grass suffers. Well... I guess the opposite is true here. When you hear good dialogue, that's when people start getting inspired and uh, people start converting. They start changing their lives around, right? Abusive individuals become more kind, more decent. Uh, thieves start uh, start uh, becoming charitable. I don't know. Chubby people get skinny. Ugly people start looking better. All right, let's move forward, guys. Hop on. So I don't look like such an idiot, just rambling. And like the show. Judaism's better. That's just a sort of a tactic to get you guys angry enough to come up here and dialogue. Now, clearly, I think what's good for me is good for others. So I promote Judaism. Um, and I think Judaism could hold its own against Christianity. Not just hold its own. I think it, it from a reasonable, logical perspective, it's superior to Christianity and Islam. Although I believe... Christianity and Islam are good ethical movements. I just think that Judaism is better. And this is, uh, I think, the most reasonable way to approach ethical movements out there. It's interesting when you hear a Jewish person completely spit on Christianity and Islam and, uh, and not acknowledge and give credit where credit is due. And I think that takes away credibility from that person. You're just a cheerleader for your for your side. And that is definitely not what I am. When I see something special in another religion, as 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 someone who emulates a good God, I give credit. And, you know, if I see that my religion doesn't do it enough, I adopt it into my belief system. That's it. I mean, I won't say Judaism teaches, right? The truth is Judaism doesn't cover every topic. It covers most. But yes, I think we could learn. Uh, from other people. It says, there's a statement in the Talmud that if they tell you that there's, that there's, um, what is it? If they tell you there's wisdom among the nations, believe them. But if they tell you that there's Torah amongst the nations, don't believe them. Okay, I guess that's something for you guys to think about. All right, I'm going to answer some questions here. Let's see. Let me start from the top. I guess I, all right. So w 4 r w zero one F. Did you plan that handle out? I'm doing fine. How are you, sir? Okay, moving forward. Do you believe that Hashem is constantly involved in the world, recreating every moment? I don't know what that means. I mean, it sounds deep. 
Um, recreating every moment. Recreating what? I don't get it. What's the difference between Zionism and Judaism? Uh, one has to do with a religion. I've heard many people say that every Jew is a Zionist because every, or every religious Jew is a Zionist because we seek to return to Zion, but that's not necessarily what Zionism is. That's maybe what biblical Zionism is, but uh, the Zionism that's Herzl Zionism is not biblical Zionism. So uh, from that perspective, traditional Zionism has really nothing to do with Judaism. It's, it's very antithetical to Judaism. The early Zionists didn't really care about settling in the land of Israel. But anyways, I don't want to make this political. But yes, I support the state of Israel. Like the video, guys. Like, like, like. Next. I want to convert to Judaism, but I don't understand Zionism, and no one wants to explain. Well, you could convert to Judaism no matter what your stance on Israel happens to be. Okay? And uh, if you find a synagogue that gives you a problem with that, just go to a different synagogue. Okay, can you join? Guys, everyone is welcome to hop in this live as long as you have a thousand followers. That's TikTok's rules. Why do people hate why do people hate fake Jews like Kazarians? Uh okay. I, I don't know. I I'm not familiar with hatred for Kazarians. <laughs> you mean Kazars? So uh I don't know if Kazars were fake Jews. If they converted, they're real Jews. What's the big deal? Okay, do you believe that Hashem is constantly involved? Okay, again. Judaism is good for shekels. I don't know what that means. Uh, wow, I actually respect your view on Zionism versus Judaism, and I'm a Muslim. Okay, well, uh, that makes sense, because it's not so favorable to what most Jews believe. Hey, what's up, Alon? Just just to um, be clear, you know, most Orthodox Jews are not traditional Zionists. More, and they're not non-Zionists. It's not this fringe like Natura Carta, like the guys you see marching alongside Palestinians, that's very rare. Very rare. Although, let's say, just being an anti-Zionist is not rare. Like, Satmar is anti-Zionist. Um, Natura Carta, which is not a Hasidic group, by the way, although they look Hasidic, they're actually Litvish. They're the ones who march alongside Palestinians. Satmar would never do that. Uh, so, yeah, it's just something for most people to know that I guess they overlook. Why so dressed up? I, uh, I just... I actually just flew in from D.C. Um, and, uh, and there was this Breck meeting today. So Breck is, like I said, the Broward County Republican National Committee or something. I'm a precinct committeeman. I'm like a whatever. I'm involved politically. And uh, yeah, that's so that's why I'm all dolled up. OK, what's next? All right, guys, was everybody? Jesus was the Messiah. What you know? Okay, I mean that's like yelling Palestine in a in a, let me see who would that piss off uh, in a in a Jewish TikTok. You have to explain why. I'm all glad that uh, all these guys have these one-liners and they're happy to be Christian. Although they can articulate why they're Christian, they're just happy to be it. I get it. You know. Um, however. There's enough channels that uh, if you just yell that, you'll s seem smart in, but not in this one. And not because of me, because I just think the, the average person who watches this TikTok is a little more advanced in religion than the other ones, right? We don't use words like truth here or, you know, well, it's the truth. Believe in it, it's the truth. Or we don't use words like heretic. And we don't insult other religions um, at all. I mean, I haven't really run into unethical or people who... Are promoting unethical values in other religions i had a probably a 10 minute dialogue with a norse pagan and um i guess although he didn't really explain the ethical law code right uh it was mostly narrative he he seemed to be an ethical guy to me you know he seems now granted i think he he grew up christian um but uh yeah i like learning about other religions and if and if i'm able to learn I'm pretty sure you guys could pick it up. I mean, I've always, you have to repeat things like two or three times for it to stick. So if I could get it, for sure you guys could get it. What do you think about the whole not showing women's faces in the media thing? Oh, so that's like a Haredi thing. Um, in Israel, they do that, like, on the side of the buses, they'll go and they'll put like a huge sticker over a woman's face. That's not a big Orthodox thing. It's a big ultra-Orthodox thing, and mainly in Israel. Heck, in, in, in Israel, also like in the Haredi neighborhoods, the women sit in the back of the bus. 
And it's one thing I never liked about Israel, not the whole women sitting on the bus uh, back. I mean, I didn't roll in those neighborhoods, right? That's parts of Beit Shemesh, uh, Mer Sharem, and stuff like that. But if you notice, I mean, chivalry is dead in Israel. It's it's not a thing. And I, I fancy myself like a cowboy, right? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like uh, Jimmy Stewart, Elvis Presley. You know, I walk around with like a gun and a whip, right? Um, so... I see a woman standing, I, I, I offer her my seat, right? Uh, same thing with like an old person, this and that, that does not exist in Israel. It does not exist in Israel. You could be on a bus and it's like all the guys are sitting and all the women are standing. And it's just like nobody cares. It's like the weirdest thing. Also, I don't really believe in women working. I mean, I guess whatever, the woman I'm with could work if she wants to work, but I've always, uh, I've always given them the option not to work. And for some reason they take it, you know, whatever. But in Israel, it's also, you know, um, two parent households that it's like so, so non-conservative. And this is a new thing, by the way, it's because leftism mainly because it leftism here. Who are we fooling? It's mainly a Jewish movement, Jewish in terms of it's it's it's. Jews are overly rep represented in this movement. This um, leftism, feminism, liberalism has infected relig Orthodox or observant Judaism more than Orthodox Jews have affected secular Jews. This is just a given, especially in Israel. I mean, I could say the same thing, that Arab culture, at least some, in mannerisms, have affected Israelis more than um, the West or European cultures amongst you know, Ashkenazi Jews have affected Arabs. It's just, they, they just pick up the, like, the worst things. Um, but yeah, that's one thing you're not going to get on this channel. We don't, like, sugarcoat anything. Uh, I don't want you guys coming to Judaism under the wrong auspices, and you'll be like, you know, Rabbi Asher lied to me. I ain't lying to nobody, okay? With all the problems we have, we're still head and heels above uh, head and shoulders. Head and heels. All right, what kind of heels? Oh, I just saw this shoe. Uh, what's it called? A lobster claw, all right? You ever seen that? I mean, I saw it in some lady... Like, lady gaga video or something but i saw it i don't know they were selling it i'm like it's like this weird shoe all right let's see we have our people we why have our people been kicked out of so many countries uh our people have not been kicked out of that many countries um in terms of when when the state of israel was established that's different that's because uh nationalism uh but from before i I uh, take a different approach towards Jewish history. I think the Jews have had it probably better than most throughout history by the simple fact that we're here. Um, you know, the countless little tribes that just no longer exist anymore uh, because they were hit so hard. By the simple fact that we're here to tell the story, uh, Jews are able to, in some way, uh, have some vestige of a lineage going back to to rabbis in the second temple period it shows that jews as bad as as they had it uh wasn't that bad compared to other groups right i mean it wasn't only the jewish people that were persecuted in europe right the protestants were persecuting the catholics and the catholics are persecuting, persecuting the protestants and yes there there are smaller fringe groups that got caught in between always not not to mention the jews and yeah so i'm my goal here is not to elevate the Jewish people or the Jewish experience, but to elevate Torah. That's it, you know, and I, and for some reason, people like me, we get a lot of pushback because there's, there's a lot of yes men and cheerleaders that, uh, what Seder do Mizrahis use? I assume it's Nadota Mizrahi. Welcome. Yo, yo. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Peace be upon us. Yes, yes. So, Rabbi, you said you said something good. Something? Yeah, you said you said something good. I liked it. You said that Jewish people had it good, um, more than a lot of people, right? Well, uh, well okay. I mean, I didn't say good, uh, but possibly better than a lot of groups that aren't even here with us. By the simple I, fact that we're telling the story and people are converting to Judaism, and uh, Israel has its own or the Jews have their own country, it shows that it could have been a lot worse compared to other people that are that no longer exist. But yeah. I agree. Now here's here's the twist. Would it have been possible for the Jewish people to be where they're at today had the Islam not been like had Islam not um come about? 
Hmm. Uh, why? Because <clears throat> during the advent of Islam, you know, the Muslims took over the Byzantine and the Persian Empire, who both yeah. were fighting each other, and the Jewish people were basically like a pawn in between them. Like um, when the Muslims took over Jerusalem, this was after the um, this was after the Byzantines reconquered it from the Persians, and the Jews mm -hmm. helped the Persians in that battle. So when the Byzantines took it back over, they were basically like subjugating the Jews, like punishing them for betraying them. So when the Muslims came, they you know they they called them the people of the book. They gave them you know um, status, dimmi status, right, which they were protected. Their wealth was protected. Their property was protected, and they were yeah. able to practice the way they wanted to. For the most part, that's all. Though even through 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 Europe, that's why Mandis was able to practice in in, in, in Andalus, right? So mm -hmm. without Islam, do you think that the 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 Byzantines and the Persians would have just been fighting, and the Jews like it would have been like a a lost thing? Or what was your opinion on that? I'll tell you. Um, till around maybe seventy years ago, the the Jews of Europe weren't familiar with the Jews in the Middle East, and the Jews in the Middle East really weren't that familiar with Jews in Spain, and they were essentially different groups. Uh, when when um, Middle Easterners, or well, let's say Yemenite Jews, arrived in Israel, the vast majority of Jews that were there considered them not Jewish, uh, because they never saw uh, a Yemenite Jew, a dark-skinned Jew. And... Um, in terms of Muslims, I mean, the reason Israel has a state is not because of Islam. It's mainly because of Christians. Um, the job of the British Empire was to spread Victorian values, and they, and they allotted a piece of land. I mean, well, they handed it over to the League of Nations, but with the Balfour Declaration and stuff like that, they their plan was for Israel to, I mean, to get a little sliver of land. Islam did nothing for for them in that case. Now, um. Yes, I mean Jews flourished during the Golden Age. I mean, Age of Spain. But who, who's to say that if for some reason, I don't know, um, who's the alternative to the Muslims? The Byzantines it, and the Persians. Well, the Byzantines were Christians, and the Persians were Zoroastrian and uh, uh, Zoroastrians. What? I can't even. I'm not even sure how to classify that term. Uh, why would I assume that they would have been any worse than the Jews? Because under the Bi Byzantines, the Jews were subjugated. Under the Persians, the Jews were subjugated. And the Jews and the, and, and, and the Byzantines and the Persians were always fighting each other. And the Jews were in between. Subjugated. Huh? But Jews had the same rights in the Byzantine Empire as they did in, in England or in other Christian countries. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So the Muslims gave them dimmi status, which means they were protect. Like Jews for a long time could not even practice in public, right? They would hide. They'd have to hide their, you know, their faith. In Christian society, I've huh? I've heard the opposite. I mean, you said I've heard, what? I've heard the opposite. I mean, not that. I mean, for sure. I think the average you acknowledge uh, that uh, they were more accepted amongst Muslims, but Jews were allowed to practice in public. I mean, even England had a Jewish prime minister after a while, you know, so it's, and, and Poland had a Jewish king as it was really an interim king, king. Uh, but Christians were good to Jews. Uh, I'm not saying great to them, um, but to say Which that. Which time period? Because I'm talking about seventh century. Oh, um, I, I, I don't, in terms of the seventh century, I mean, Christianity didn't really yeah, but you're talking about Islam in general. I mean, you're not just talking about Islam in the seventh century, right? So I'm talking like so in the seventh century, the visit like the Jewish people. I forgot yeah. what the historian. It was a guy I can't remember his name right now, but it was a historian. And he basically argued that had it not been for the advent of Islam, he was a Jewish by the way. Had it not been for the advent of Islam, Judaism probably would have been wiped out because of the you know political climate at the time. Like it was basically Byzantines, Persians going at it, and Jews were caught in the middle. This is why the Jews help the Persians when they came for, to Jerusalem. You understand what I'm saying? Um, like, the, like, like it, was, it was a bad situation. I got I to gotta find his name. I, I don't yeah, know. no problem. I, it's, it's, I don't have an answer to that. I mean, Jews back then, the vast majority of them were not in the Middle East, uh, at least that we know of. Uh, um, they were mainly the, well, right. Well, Spain wasn't in the Middle East. 
the most influential rabbis even at the time were either from like northern africa morocco uh spain and uh what they called the western rabbis that means the rabbis from france and england that came from italy so i i don't i don't know i don't know it's uh, it's not too convincing just because they had an existence amongst Christians, but to assume that if if all these Jews ceased to exist in the Arab world, would Judaism have has ceased? I, no. like, I don't. So the question I'm asking, the thing, the point I was making is that had it not been for Islam, the Byzantines and the Persians would have done away with the Jews in general, like <clears throat> all that fighting. The that region. Not... Yeah. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Wait. Yes. So. Yes. That... No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. In the Jews of that region, not the Jews in general. Yeah, but then they would have been cut off from the Western Jews. And then even the Western Jews, you don't have the Spain. So you, know. you said caught in the middle. Being caught in the middle is not being targeted for, for genocide. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's many. That's kind of a bold statement. I don't know, that if it wasn't for Islam, there would be no Jews. I mean, the truth is, if it wasn't for, for, for Jews, there would be no Islam. That's Whoa. probably a interesting statement. I got you. Let me find this guy's name, and I'm gonna come back. Oh, yeah. I'm saying. No, but I'll tell you. Even rabbis like Maimonides finds redeemable qualities in both Islam and Christianity. You know, so we could acknowledge that they were, they for sure played a big piece in the puzzle. Uh, a bigger statement is that there probably wouldn't be Jews in Europe if if the U.S. didn't intervene during World War II. All right, or I guess it's weirder to say this, but if Stalin didn't attack from the east. So, um, yeah, Jews have a lot to, to be grateful for. What I have a problem with is when Jews become too religious and they're like, we don't have to thank anybody from, but God. I think that's an arrogant statement. And I think uh, it's, it's, it's not so foreign to, to assume that God uses other people to help the Jews as well. You know, that if, Jews, that if help doesn't come uh, with an army only wearing kippahs, uh, then it's not from God. It's not true. Yeah, so someone says that, um, I think most people know that, uh, most people know that, that the Rambam was Salah din's personal physician. I don't know if that's proven, though. I mean, there's a lot of things said about the Rambam that's kind of made up, right? I'm just trying to be honest. I mean, there's a, a statement that the Rambam converted to Islam. Um, who wrote it? I think there's a historic, historian called Shalit something, uh, but... A lot of these things are disproven, but I'm pretty sure if that was fake, that's something that the Jews would not want to disprove. All right. Um, for sure, the Rambam converting to Islam is something that people automatically call fake because they just don't want to hear it. Now, I'm not saying I believe it, but I'm just telling you this is the way people function. Uh, the truth is, it's possible because under his um, own rules, he could convert to Islam to save his life. While other people at the time, I would say the vast majority of rabbis, stated that you cannot. But he kind of changed changed the norm. And since the Rambam, uh, rabbis started teaching that Islam is not that form of idolatry that one has to give up their life for. All right? But this is something the Rambam invented. All right. Uh-oh. I miss I I lost you. I don't know what happened. Hold on. Hi. Hi. How, how are I? you? You know how it is. You know, slicing and dicing <laughs> like <laughs> like uh, oil. I was just curious. You said earlier you don't think women should work. I was wondering why. No, on, on a personal level, I'm not saying women in general. I mean, my woman, or if a man, look, let's not fool each other. Men have to purchase respect, okay? I mean, nothing's free in this world. So if a woman is busting her butt at work, being yelled at, and then you still expect her to, I mean, to come home, prepare for Shabbos, and have kids, it's it's a lot of stress. I think um, hard labor, stress, and, and headaches are for men, and enjoying life are, are for women and children. It is for women and children. Um, that's I'm a I'm a old fashioned conservative, and that's how I think. Um, you know, it's said 
it sets a nice trend for the house. It keeps the woman happy. And guys like the pushback. We like the stress. We like going in and slaying dragons. I don't know if desensitizing women makes them happier. However, um, stress and, and pressure on men makes them better men and makes them more admirable to women. All right. I don't think the average man likes a boss bitch and doesn't uh, find it appealing that she could debate her way through anything. I mean, it sounds like you're creating an opponent for yourself. So this is why. Welcome, Lion River. How are you, man? Good. Good. So what do you think about I my just statement? said about woman. Huh? You're going to tell your wife to quit her job? Guys, all you have to do is do do without a little bit, right? I mean, possibly sell a car, downgrade a house, and then you could keep your wife at home happy. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that doesn't mean they have to stay at home. Um, you give her a credit card and tell her to, I don't know, just, just go and enjoy life. But, yeah, I mean, I think men are, I mean, I dig it. I mean, I love having to go out there and make money and do what I got to do. And, and I think it makes me a better person for it. And I think that uh, it hurts at least married women. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, hurts her femininity. Okay. Go. Cool. What do you think I miss? Am I, uh, I, too I love my job. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think it's great if a woman works for herself. But, but the idea of having a stressful job, and I think most people out there have, like, jobs that they don't really enjoy. But you work with kids, right? No, I, I work in a hospital. I specialize in swallowing disorders in adults who have cancer. Oh. Uh, I think you worked in some sort of Jewish institution. I, when I was, when I was um, training to do what I do, part of my license is to work with children, and that some of that time was spent at a yeshiva, yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know. It, if your husband doesn't mind, <laughs> then uh, go for it. Yeah. You know, he doesn't mind. You know, I love it. I, I spent a long time in school studying to do this. I'm, I'm, it's my passion. And I'm married and I have a child. And that's another part of my life, too. But I think I think working, it, it's my adult time. You know, it's my, like, it's, it's intellectually stimulating. Yeah. I learn new things every day. It's exciting. You know they like, say? I don't think of these jobs, the average person is in the back room, I don't know, but like reading Tolstoy or, I mean, it's work. It's work. It's, I mean, really, in terms of, like, finding something more intellectually stimulating, you could join a book club or become some sort of activist or volunteer or this and that. But, yeah, I mean, if you're really working, I mean, if, if you're really enjoying it, it's not even considered work, right? I mean, to a certain extent. Oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Today I yeah. got to do, like, modified barium swallows. Like, um, we watch people swallow under x-ray. It's, like, my favorite part of my job. And today I got to do, like, six of them in a row, which is, like, almost never happened. So, like, I had a blast. <laughs> so, you have a profession. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's different than, I don't know having a regular nine to five in a boss that you have to appease. I mean, I guess it's your one jerk, even in a regular profession could destroy it for everybody. I hate jerky people. Oh my gosh. I mean, I strive to be extremely nice just because bullies and freaking, you know, dumb people frustrate me. Yeah. Trust me. If you guys worked with me, the truth is you'd probably never get nothing done because we'd be laughing the whole time. I love what, do you, like what do you do for income? So I'm a network admin and I have my own company and I uh, like everything with like networks, computers, some programming. Yeah. Cool. I, I love my job also. I mean, IT is awesome. Uh, it's a little stressful, but I'm able to sort of do a lot. Well, actually, no. Okay. Get a lot while doing a little. It's just because most people don't know anything about computers or networks or anything like that. So I could go in and touch a few things and it's already like. That's what my bang. husband is. He, he runs his own business, but he, he codes and like does all the computer and technology and stuff. And he loves that. So it's kind of like he said, he enjoys his work. So does it really work? You know, <laughs> bank. That's it. Gang, gang, gang. <laughs> Unless you're a vampire. 
that's probably, you know, I mean, you never die. So it's like, it doesn't matter if you kind of get a little burned out. I mean, do vampires get tired? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. No, because if you don't die, I mean, there's not a lot of wear and tear, right? I mean, because that's what leads to death. But if you live forever, I mean, I guess, I don't know. Vampires, baby. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Why does, what does rabbi translate to? Oh, a teacher, I guess. Yeah. Um, Although, I mean, just to clear it up, because I know many people say that Jesus was a rabbi. Okay. Technically, I guess if you view it, I guess what's that called? An adjective as a descriptive term, then yes. You know, I guess in that case, Muhammad was a rabbi too. But rabbi nowadays means something different. And rabbi in the time of Jesus, of, of the time of Jesus meant something different also. Rabbi back then was the title that was given to the men who had ordination in the Sanhedrin. That's why you have mm-hmm. guys like Rabban Gamliel. Like rabbi meant that you had ordination going all the way back to Moses. This is Jesus did not have this, right? There were men in the Sanhedrin who also didn't have it. Rabbi nowadays um, was a term created, one, I think, to compete with other clergymen who had a title. Because before 1536 of the Common Era, Jews used to call their teachers either Chacham, which is also just a descriptive term, like a wise man, or Mori, which just means like instructor or teacher, uh, but not rabbi. This is why it's interesting. We have names like Rashi and Rambam, which are acronyms, but you have to know these acronyms are probably less than 200 years old. In the time of Rashi, nobody called him Rashi. In the time of the Rambam, yeah, they said you know, more at the yeshiva. That's what everyone was. More of this, more of that. Right. Well, so the R in all these names is like Rabbi, like Rosh, like um, Rabbi Moshe Ben Maimon. It's an acronym that they created. Much. All these acronyms are result. All these things are later, right? Like an abbreviated form. I guess they wanted to save ink when they were writing things. But no, the Rambam wasn't called Rabbi, and. Uh, only because you're a teacher nowadays doesn't mean you're a rabbi. I don't care for the title, by the way. I mean, I have smicha. I have more than one smicha. But I I got it when I left Israel because I knew that in America, I'm so vague. You know, it, it most people don't it, don't don't want to listen to someone who doesn't have the title. Yeah. Okay? So mm-hmm. the truth is, in Israel, the average person doesn't learn for smicha, for ordination. Because the average yeshiva kolo guy knows more than the average rabbi in Israel. In Israel, at least in Jerusalem, it's a very thick Torah culture. While in America, people think that a pulpit rabbi knows something. If if you made it to be a pulpit rabbi, by definition, it means that you're not too respected in the Jewish world. I mean, it's just, you're more like a showman. You do funerals, you're like Masada Kedushin and weddings. Uh, but the guys who actually learn all day, and I'm against learning all day, by the way. I'm against the Kolo system, which is a big Ashkenazi thing. I mean, um, Hasidic Jews aren't big on learning all day. European Jews and uh, made learning Torah into a sport and they learn for the sake of learning. <laughs> they send their wives to work. I mean, talking about me wanting my wife not to work. Jewish men, Ashkenazi Jewish men in the morning, you see it in Israel in the bus stops. All you see are Arabs and women because the Jewish men in, in like Haredi ultra Orthodox communities, they're learning from the morning to the nighttime. Mm-hmm. And I think it is stupid. It is stupid and it is new. Jews never did this. If you tried this in Europe, you would start to death. Okay. Um, so what these guys do in a place like Israel, they live off welfare and they send their wives to work. And in some way, they they wonder why their children come out, ex- their boys come out extremely feminine and their daughters come out extremely masculine. It's It's completely upside down and it's corrosive, destructive. No one endorses this with the Mishnah. No one in in in, in Talmudic times and like the Roshonim don't endorse this. The Rambam or the Mishnah says that the way you you single out a big city from a small city is because you have ten people learning full time. But those are like the scholars of the city that are there to instruct other people. Now, if you ever been to a kolel, a kolel is a yeshiva for married guys, what they call it kolel, mm-hmm. and. Um, these guys, it's like many, many people who get paid peanuts to learn. I think in Israel, kolel, the, the average kolel is like 150 bucks, 200 bucks a month. You could like do what's called night seder that they pay you a little more. The highest, more, 
the best paying colos in Israel are probably like five hundred, six hundred dollars a month. Uh, yeah. So this notion of learning all day, I don't even know how I got into that. I just forgot. But it's I think because we were talking about like yeah, I the Chabad yeshiva that I was at. I mean, half the school day was Torah stuff. <laughs> you know, it was interesting. Yeah, but those are kids. No, kids, I get it. Um, I, but I mean, all the way up until the high school age, and then they were getting yeah. ready to go to like a kollel. So my son is in Chabad, and mm-hmm. I'm, he goes to here LEC. It's a uh, Lubavitch Educational Center. So yeah, it's sure, in, yeah. It, that's what Jewish I work with kids. It's like almost all Torah, and I get it. I mean, I'm all for it, right? But yeah, when I someone... support it 100. percent Believe it or not, my son goes to a <laughs> religious school um, because I, I don't co-parent with the government. <laughs> What's up? I'm like a proud girl. <laughs> but you know, I think I just I don't know. I'm not not too thrilled with what the public education system is doing right now. I'm sure you would agree. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I, I, it's insane. I mean, Everything's offensive. You can't say nothing. It's insane. Ah, look at you, huh? I mean, you have all these conservative tendencies. I do. I'm I'm, I'm more conservative than most people give me credit for. <laughs> I don't even know your politics really. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't get too much into identity politics on this app because I primarily make content trying to explain to people how language works, and mm. most of that time is spent explaining primarily to ev- evangelical Christians that Hebrew and Greek are actual languages, <gasps> mm. <laughs> that their their meanings are not lost to antiquity, and that you know there are ways to understand what was actually being said in some verse in Leviticus. So. I, I try to try to not involve my identity politics in it because then it just gets messy and the comment section becomes about that instead of what I'm actually trying to do. What state do you live in? Pardon? What state do you live in? I live in the Northeast United States. Uh, New York. Boston. We, Maine. We, can D, we can DM about it. I don't share location on live. Maine? You live in Maine? <laughs> no, I mean, no. I said we can DM about it. <laughs> Stephen King lives in Maine. We can DM about it, but yeah, I, think... I don't know what the secret is. Why are people so secret on TikTok? I mean, you know, because, I'm just... because I have been, I have been threatened on here, doxxed, very scary stuff. That's why. Not that I think you would do that, but doxxed. I mean, what are you, I mean, what are you running from? All right, we have a uh, a a peaceful Muslim here, uh, Chief. What's his name? Well, it's still loading. Might need my might not work. Well, anyways, we'll call him Squidward because that's what it looks like his 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 uh, avatar is. Okay. Anyways, let's read some of this. Can Pachelino Jews convert? Absolutely. What are you talking about? Pachelino Jews means that your father's Jewish and your mother's not Jewish. Yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, uh, Chief Clay. Welcome. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, everyone, yeah. Rabbi. I got to go. Bye. Okay. Talk Wait. To you. Bye. I got to tell you something. Okay. What? <laughs> Who, me? Both of you. Okay. Ooh, according so to David, is... according to David Watson, turn that. Never heard of him. Oh come on, he's so. Yeah, I said Wasserstein. I think that's what you put there. Or Wasser? No, wait a minute. Yeah, but it doesn't mean anything. Only because one Jew and there's many Jews who say things that that, that aren't very popular. Who says that if it wasn't for Islam, would there be no Judaism or something? Like that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's professor of Jewish studies and. Uh... And Colbert, man, oh, Vanderbilt. Uh, I mean, that's like his opinion, man. <laughs> so, according to you him, Big Lebowski, huh? You know, the Big Lebowski, he's like, that's like your opinion, man. No, I'm just saying, I mean, that's just one opinion. That's like the black Hebrew Israelite way of debating, right? I mean, they have this book and they're like, <laughs> reading all these books about Egyptology and they start quoting like, who cares? Things in life either confirm the obvious or are typically wrong. So let's kind of focus on logic. Okay. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter who says something. This is why I tell people study the Torah without a commentary. Okay. Uh, first study it without a commentary. And then oh, don't take my Chabad.org from me. Don't do it. <laughs> right. Well, you can read it without a commentary in Chabad.org also. I mean, there's like, a, I know, but I always problem. click show, you know me. <laughs> I have oh. to click show. <laughs> Uh, so only because someone has a fancy title in front of their name does you know how many PhDs I've debated on my channel? I mean, like just go to my torjudaism.org. These guys typically are like clueless. All you guys 
listening here on TikTok Live and go ahead and like this this show because we get uh, it'll give us more exposure. You guys have a more rigorous um, Bible study. Uh, uh, you guys think about the Bible more, learn more about the Bible than the average doctor of divinity student. I'll tell you, mm. these guys who live in their little academic shells, no crap. <laughs> I mean, they don't. Mm. Are you kidding me with what you could actually pick up online? And YouTube and Clubhouse and just mm-hmm. just being in a debate here with with a a polite Muslim or a polite Black Hebrew Israelite is equivalent to being in a year course, you know, studying I don't know what the Q theory or whatever academics, you know, doctors of divinity of divinity studies. Yeah, These guys don't know crap. I think because people are passionate about it, so they so they stick to like one point and like try to like you know. Master as much information. Like, no. I, get, I get what you're saying. Here, most of these people, these professors, are atheists typically. Yeah or, yeah. or just not religious, like the whole anchor Bible crowd. I mean, these guys, uh, the documentary hypothesis, I'm not saying that you have to be a believer to, to have credibility, but it does sort of fuel your studying uh, if you're actually believing what you're studying. I mean, if it's just all academics, and right. at the end, I, I think by, by that, if you don't believe in God, it's going to taint your learning, right? And also, if you believe in God, that may taint your learning also. But I think being that they have this hunger to make everything religious look trivial, that they're only going to present their side. And being that truth is not a value to them, they'll do it more than a religious person who feels that God wants him to be honest. So this is why I don't care. I mean, I honestly don't trust any men who don't believe in God. I, I, I wouldn't fight next to one. I mean, they're just not trustworthy. I mean, I wouldn't trust a spouse who didn't believe in God. Right? I mean, I wouldn't trust my money with someone who didn't believe in God, but whatever. I True. guess we all can't uh, be too picky. No, I agree with you on that point. But the point I was making and the reason I'm saying all this is the advent, because you always make the claim Judaism is better, right? Yeah. And I say that Islam is better Number one, in, in its teachings and it, its practical use. You know what I'm saying? Because Judaism, number one, when when Jews were in control, what happened to the people under their rule? Um, I don't know what happened. So if you're uh, um, this kid, let's say King David or King Solomon, right? What yeah. happened to the non-Jews that live under him? They, well, we believe and that uh, Gentiles are allowed to live amongst Israel as long as they live by by a bare minimum of, of decency. Some people call it the seven Noah laws. And some people believe they're more than Noah, like more than seven. But yeah, what are you of the opinion that we, we did away with them or something? No, I say that Islam is the most practical because it allowed in practice, in theory, it says, you know, to leave the people of the book, let them practice all that. And in practice, it actually happened. And because of the practice of Islam and how it treated non-Muslims, or Jews and Christians, the Jewish people were able to thrive, not 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 live to thrive. Um, and I would say, in all of Jewish history, this you know, before you know, after Saul, like I'm talking about like the last two thousand years, the mm-hmm. Jews thrived the most under Muslim rule. When the when the temple got destroyed. Up until the year 560, the Jews were scattered. They were, they were getting persecuted. They're everywhere, wait, wait. right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. So I think Islam should be grateful that there was a book that existed to attach people to it. Um, in other words, by saying that Islam protected people who weren't Muslim, specifically Christians and Jews, meant that there were people worth protecting. In Torah times, in King David's times, when being an idolater or not being Jewish by definition meant that you were in some way worshiping some foreign god, that by definition meant that you were an unethical individual that wasn't tolerated in in our midst. Now, being that Judaism gave birth to Christianity and gave birth to Islam, uh, well, not, but they gave birth to them indirectly, that meant that you had people that you can subjugate, right? Because they're still subjects. They're in somewhat second-class citizens that still behaved in an ethical manner. So you can't fault King David, you know, for not tolerating Amalekites and Philistines among them when these people behaved worse than animals. 
But of course, a Muslim couldn't say the same thing about a Jewish person or a Christian because they've both been sensitized by the Torah. So, and we uh, have to use scales here. So, again, I, I mean, I let you say just for sake of conversation, but just just so you know, I don't believe that Islam came from Judaism. I believe that Moses was a Islamic prophet. Uh, the the Torah is a book revealed by the God of Islam. Also, you understand what I'm saying? Um, but for sake of conversation, I'll, I'll give. I'll, mm, yeah. I, I won't, but anyway, so if you're saying that, but let me ask you: Do you be my? But do you believe that Muhammad was a Christian? Uh, do I believe he was a Christian? What do you mean a yeah. Christian? A follower of Jesus? I mean, what do you mean by Muslim? Like a follower one of Muhammad? One who submits his will to the Creator. Ah, so by Christian I mean with someone who believes in the Christ. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Ah, okay. You know, so now, you know how we feel every time we hear that you say that Moses was a Muslim. Hmm. But, it, but it, he was though. By definition, he was. By so by definition, by, Muhammad was a Christian then. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah, percent. All like, right, so we're not saying anything. Then. So you're playing with words just to fool people and to join your religion. No, listen, listen. If you say if you say Muhammad was a Christian, as in a follower of Christ, the God of Christ, hundred percent, right. because Christ is translated Messiah. No, I get it. Jesus Messiah. Now to say that G G Moses was a Arabic word Muslim, one who submits, that's true. Right. And okay, so it's true that okay. So Moses was a Muslim just as Muhammad was a Christian, correct? Uh to, to but yeah, to an extent. And when I say Christian, I don't mean like believe that Jesus died for your sins and all right. That. So why don't Christians walk around making that statement to convert more Muslims to Christianity? To say Muhammad is a Christian? Yes. You know um, why? Because they're honest. <laughs> and Muslims aren't in this area. Because they know that it's it's really a form of of deception right clearly the muslim position is that Mo that moses was a muslim like muhammad was a christian meaning moses was a muslim because to be a muslim means someone who submits to god muhammad was a christian because to be a christian means someone who follows uh uh the christ or, or so you're not saying anything Moses wasn't a Muslim, and Muhammad wasn't a Christian. Okay, what was Moses then? Moses was in what's called the Torah Covenant. Okay, what like if if he was if he was alive, and you ask him, Moses, what religion do you follow? What would he say to you? So religion didn't exist back then. If you say Moses, what do you do? What is what do you do? He's gonna say, I, I submit my will to the Creator. Correct. Yeah, it's Muslim. You're not gonna say I'm I was a Torah observer or a Jew or nothing. You just say I submit my will to the Creator. So well, okay. Jesus or Abraham. So saying that you submit your will to the Creator doesn't really mean anything if that Creator doesn't have a set of laws, right? I, there's any who will say I believe in God and I'm spiritual, uh, but that tells me nothing about how that person behaves unless that person attaches his or her spirituality to some code, some some set of laws. Yeah, so he would. Say, that yes, I submit my will to the Creator as it's described, right? As that will is described in the Torah. So it, now a Muslim doesn't really believe that because you believe that the Torah we have was corrupted or we changed it or, and no, also, not, not necessarily. Uh, it, the Quran comes to supersede it. So even if we have a preserved Torah from the time of Moses and we have it, Moses has a signature on it. The Quran comes to supersede it. Okay, you know something. So, what if? A Muslim having the true Torah, uh, because Muslims believe that they have the the clearest understanding of what the Torah teaches, says, you know what, I'm just going to keep this Torah. But I'm not convinced that Muhammad is a prophet or the final messenger. Um, will they make it to the world to come? No. If you deny the final prophet, then you, you can't because you're denying the final prophet. Ah, so then it has nothing to do with keeping the Torah ultimately. Yeah, because because. When once the Quran comes, the, if a true we believe a true follower of the Torah would recognize the Prophet Muhammad as a true prophet and follow him, mm -hmm. if somebody truly observed Torah, right? Because if you look at the teachings of the Torah, you look at the teachings of the Prophet, you'll see a hey, same seems like the same source. Like just mm -hmm. think of it, this man was in seventh century Arabia, and no, I understand, I understand the narrative. Everybody knows. Trust me, 
I think TikTok has made more Muslims than any other platform out there, just because, I don't know. I mean, it's just like big in Kuwait and in Muslim countries. But it sounds like Islam is very similar to Christianity. You know, I mean, Christians, or at least Messianic Jews, will say, yes, Torah observance is good, it's beautiful to submit to the will of God, but it ultimately has nothing to do with submitting to the will of God because it's a, it, it's about accepting someone as a Messiah in order to find your place to heaven. And Islam is, it's not about keeping God's instructions, it's ultimately about accepting someone as God's final messenger. So it's all about narrative. It has nothing to do with instructions. It's no, no. based on what you believe and not what you do. No, so, no. So it's both. So the belief is the most important thing. You have to believe. That's the most yeah, so important thing, right? It's not the most important thing for us. Because what's the point? Like, if you don't believe in God, what's the point of your actions? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you mean? What's the, wait, wait, wait. It's actually the opposite. Okay. What's the point of believing in God if you don't have good actions? I would rather someone behave correctly, right, than tell me that they know that God exists. Now, this is the issue. There's two extremes, okay? You have the Christians on one extreme. They're all about belief. Belief, belief, belief. Even they'll make fun of you for, for doing works, they'll say, oh, your, your faith is works-based. And you have the Jews on the other extreme. They're about the works. It doesn't really matter if you believe in God. So Muslims are the one that's in between. So we, we belief in God is the most important thing. However, the five pillars of faith, I mean, of Islam, and the six pillars of faith, you have to. You're not, you're not a Muslim without these pillars. You understand what I'm saying? So it's yeah. belief with action. So let me ask you another question. What if someone's not convinced? I mean, they're just not convinced. You know, they read and they read and they pray and they pound their chest. And they're just not convinced that Muhammad is that prophet. But they love the ethics that appear in the Quran and where they essentially come from, the Torah. They believe that, you know what, this works. This makes sense. But I'm just personally, you know, I could tell you I believe in Muhammad. But I'm just not convinced. I, I, if someone's not convinced, they're not convinced. If some guy's attracted to hairy legs, you can't fix that crap. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so in that case, a good God is going to throw this person in hell just because they didn't force himself to believe that someone is a prophet? So if this person follows the ethics of the Quran and the teachings of the prophet, even if without believing in theology, they will live a good life because the teachings of Islam is for humans to live a good life. God wants you to live a good life, right? Right. After life, if you don't believe, life. yeah. If you don't believe, that's between God. Like God is the one that guides. God is the one that controls the hearts. You understand what I'm saying? You could be in your brain, like make like, oh, this makes so much sense, but your heart is not convinced because God has not changed your heart, and that's just you know, it's just un unfortunate. But yeah. The, um, yeah, but you're, after life. Yeah, after you're done. Life. You're finished. What? If after life, yeah, you're, you're, you're still in loss. If you didn't, if you actively <laughs> deny the final prophet, yeah. And this is what makes Judaism, well, yes, this is what makes Judaism superior to both Islam and, and Christianity. Because you can't control what people happen to be convinced of. And if someone, just to be light, will be like, yeah, of course. And there's any who will do that, right? I mean, heck, there's women who convert for men. There's men who convert for women. who They're like, baby, whatever you want whatever i believe in in i don't know in squidward right i mean just to, <laughs> like use your your like your profile picture right yeah. that doesn't mean anything if you're not truly convinced and this is why maimonides and he and i disagree with maimonides in this area but he's like no you really have to in some way know god which is, is kind of ridiculous right i mean there's another statement that says that if i knew god i'd be god god you know you can't judge people on what they happen to be convinced on you could only judge them on their ethical output. that's it because there's some people who are easily convinced right i mean look at the suckers who 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 buy stuff that they don't need or who are like suckers to advertising and there are people who need a little more convincing like maybe they happen to live in a community where everyone's a terrible represent uh, uh representative for the core ethics of islam and I would say yeah. the average Muslim and the average Christian, I don't think could argue from an ethical perspective how it's really more superior than, let's say, Judaism. God is in some way going to punish them just because they didn't check their brains at the door. It doesn't. I'm kind of glad that I'm Jewish, you know. I'm kind of excited that I have a God that judges me solely on my behavior and not what he expects me to be convinced of, right? I, I, I don't know. Here's the thing. God judges everybody individually. 
and uniquely, right? So if you if if you say that you believe in Islam, like you said, for a man or a woman, right? And you don't really believe, this is called hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is the worst type, the worst human and the lowest part of hellfire is the hypocrite. The one who says, I believe, and they're only people that say they're Muslim. The only, the lowest part in hell are for people who say that they're Muslim, but they're not. They're the hip, the hypocrites. And they don't, they're, in their heart is not what they say in the, with their mouth, right? Yeah, but what now, if they want to be Muslim? They really want to be Muslim and they love everything about Islam, but they just happen not to be convinced, right? I mean, they know enough about Islamic history and and they're just like, you know what? I think Muhammad is just a regular man, but heck, the message is amazing. This person is still going to go to hell. Yeah, so we believe if somebody uh, studied it and actually understood it, it would be undeniable, right? So if they still deny it, then like, like I said, that's unfortunate. God is the one that controls the hearts, you know? God could have And this is why this show is laid out the way it is. Because I approach Muslims, uh, uh, Christians, and atheists from a perspective that we can all pay tribute to. That it's essentially the commandments in the Torah that have sensitized this planet. Mainly, mainly the book, the Torah, has been the main book that has sensitized this planet. Uh, it has a trend of working, and that's the best reason to to follow any system, not because, you know, what I'm saying is the truth or, or I'm saying that Muhammad was a Jew and, and Jesus was a Jew. Like who, like, who does that help if the core is not ethical, right? If the core doesn't leave this planet a little better uh, than I found it for my kids, right? that's what matters. Who cares what someone believes? It's how they behave. I'll take someone who has great behavior and and heck, is not convinced that God exists over someone who who, if you time to a lie detector test, it'll say that he really believes that Allah is real, right? I I I think this is how God functions. That's it. So I know what you're saying, but here's my here's an issue I have with that. You're too focused on this world, right? So we believe that this world we're gonna stay here 70, 60, 80, whatever short amount of time. And then we die, and then our afterlife is eternal. We believe in a day of judgment, and we believe everything on the planet that's alive is going to is finish. It's going to perish. All the wealth, all the humans, is going to is coming to an end. But the afterlife is the eternal, and that's the, so you can't control this world. You can't control what happens here. You can only control what you do, like you said. So uh, I believe those are developed ideas. What does that mean? I believe those are developed ideas, ideas that were invented by man to get you to do X, Y, and Z. The Torah doesn't talk about a heaven and hell. Why is it that the central book of ethics expected you to do the right thing because it was the right thing to do? Not because you were trying to get into heaven or get into hell. I think reasonable people, right, they want to encourage peace. I mean, something, you know, rain in its season. This is what the Torah says that these are the rewards for keeping the Torah. Rain in its season, rain in its season, seeing your children grow old, uh, being able to live in your land, having your crops grow, everything that after you die, the people who come after you will be able to enjoy. That's so much more reasonable than some afterlife that might not even be true. I mean, there's a possibility that it's kind of all BS. <laughs> in term, you know, but of course, no one came back to tell you. So I think that from that perspective alone, I'm offering you a belief system that predates your religion and Christ and Christianity as well that tells you that you can have a relationship with God strictly off of obedience, keeping God's word, not having to be convinced that this or that happened. You're just, you know, I'm just not convinced. Some gay guy could tell me that 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 men are 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 physically attractive and i just have to believe them that i have to believe it right it, it, i'm just not attracted to men and they're like well you just don't have enough faith right i don't think i could ever be attracted to men i mean i there's just some things i'm never going to be convinced of okay i mean you know some things i want to be convinced of but they're just not uh you know god's gonna punish me because of that this is why i i, I mentioned gay people like my best friend is actually a gay guy uh, he struggles with with his thing, uh, but um, 
it's hard for me to believe that God in some way dislikes individuals who can't help but being attracted to the same sex. Okay? Oh, okay. I know the Torah prohibits the act. I'm not trying to whitewash it. I mean, he calls it a toeva, like an abomination. The act of, of laying with a man as one will with a woman. However, if a man is just not attracted to a woman, I mean, God's going to punish him if, if this is just the way, you know, he came out. And I don't believe people are born like this in the vast majority of cases. I think, you know, there was some sort of trauma. Um, it's, yeah, I, I mean, one, it would violate so many things. I mean, apart from free will, um, that you in some way have to fool yourself. Just, you know, I mean, God knows your feelings. I mean, who, who are you fooling? I mean, it. it so I, I agree with you on the point of, I don't know. Like with with with, uh, I don't want to say the word and get banned, but with that, it's not a sin to be to be that right to feel that way. That's not a sin at all. Maybe God made that person like that, or the trauma, whatever. God made God meant for this person to be this way, right? That's not the issue. The issue is when when you try to justify it, when you try to say, okay, I feel this way, and because I feel this way, it's right. Because even even if you're a man, you can't sleep with a woman who's not your wife, even though it's natural. And I'm attracted to this woman, but if I sleep with her, that, that goes against God's law. Same thing with man and man, right? So the issue is, when, like, what's going to stop you from doing it? So if you don't believe in God, what's stopping you from obeying that law? I don't think that's comparable, by the way. Uh -huh. I mean, a man stopping himself from sleeping with another man's wife, I don't think it, no, no, it's no, no, no. the desire that a man has. To no, no, no. I mean, it's you. You're, you're a man. Like you say, you're just a man, and that's a woman. You're not married. She's not married, right? It's still yeah. a sin to sleep with that woman because you're not married to her, right? Oh, not not in Judaism. What? <laughs> I'm telling you. I guess I, uh, you know, it's wrong, but it's not considered a sin. All right. Let me break this down for people because, I mean, I had to comment on your own video of some, there's this, this dummy. And the reason I call it a dummy is because I rarely call people names. But this is a guy named Yaron Rubin who just attacks people without even thinking. You know, so he made a video against Dennis Prager because Dennis Prager said Dennis Prager was in a panel with Jordan Peterson and uh, like a few other theologians there. And he mentioned how in Christianity, it makes a statement that if a man looks at a woman in, lustful, that in a lustful manner, he has he has committed adultery in his heart. You know, so he specifically said the truth that in the Torah, there's no prohibition in woman at looking at a woman lustfully. Uh, it's just not there. And then he quotes some 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 uh, non sequitur where it says, "Don't don't follow the lust of your heart." You know, to ne like to not keep God's law, right? Only because the word lust is there. It's not the same lust um, as it appears in Christianity as lusting over a woman. It means lusting to do what's wrong, i.e., what's contrary to the Torah. You know, so. Um, He's correct that according to the Torah, there's no sin of lust, of, of lusting over a woman. Uh, there is rabbinically. Rabbinically, if the woman is prohibited to you, there there is a rabbinic prohibition, but not a Torah prohibition. Meaning, it's not one of the 613 commandments. There's no commandment, in, uh, as a matter of fact, there's no commandment in the 613 commandments not to have premarital sex. Now, according to the oral law, yes, it's prohibited. Right, prohibited in the sense that now this is more what's called legalese, right? Because in Judaism, everything deals with law. One is not allowed to um, merely consummate a marriage via what's called bia. So bia is um, sex. Uh, just because, well, I'm quoting the Rambam. So the Rambam is saying that the court came to that conclusion because too many people were just sleeping with each other having sex, and then in some way getting divorced, right? Just as an excuse to have sex. But the Torah just doesn't mention it as a prohibition. It, I mean, it says that one shouldn't make prostitutes out of the daughters of Israel, right? Uh, culturally, it's wrong. And But there's three ways that someone constitutes a marriage or consummates a marriage, I'm sorry. So it's kesev, shtar, bia. So kesev was with money. And we do it nowadays in a Jewish marriage. As a matter of fact, Every marriage nowadays is consummated with kesef, with money. Um, only with money, and I'll explain that later. 
that the man gives the woman something that's worth uh, more than a sheva pruta, a uh, dowry, Roman coin. So it's it's depicted with the ring usually. So they consummate the marriage with the ring, and they they yeah. The next one is bia. In the old days, just by sleeping with a woman, assuming there were two witnesses that saw you not have sex with her, but saw you enter into, I guess, somewhat of what we call like a hater yichud nowadays, like a, a room where you're supposed to like be with her intimately, that also constitutes marriage. And and star. So star means a document. That's not a ketubah, by the way. The I mean, I'm not talking to you right now, Chief. I'm talking to just everyone out there. No, I get you, I get you. But, yeah. So a ketuba was invented in and around the time of, of Hillel, I think is Rabbi Shimon ben Shetach. Uh, but the understanding is that people forgot how to write a proper marriage contract so no one is able to get married via star. Uh, I mean, the ketuba is not a marriage contract, really. It's, it's there to protect the woman's interests. So, yes, um, according to Torah law, and technically rabbinic law, technically, uh, I don't know if the notion of I guess they call it precious or prishut. I mean, it's the word that's translated for abstinence in Hebrew. Um, it's frowned upon. It's not necessarily prohibited. It's it's um, it was always culturally a big no no. Uh, but yes, in Judaism, two people who are not married could mass. I mean, you, religious Jews don't do this. However, as someone who debates a lot. I have to be positive about what's in the Torah and what's not in the Torah and what's in halakha and what's not in halakha. So, um, yes, I think people could be could be jerks and be Torah observant. And, uh, but, again, in, in modern-day Judaism, people don't even touch. Like, men don't touch other women until they marry them. I mean, the whole notion of shomer nagiyah. Uh, so it's not that Jewish people are walking around sleeping with each other, right? Um, but just, yeah, go ahead. Yes. This is what I mean. I, mean, I appreciate the explanation. But Islam is complete because this is one of the things, like the sanctity of marriage is one of the main things of religion. You know what I'm saying? Like religion, like marriage is that it's marriage, afterlife. Or also, by the uh, way. I mean, Torah teaches that as well. I mean, marriage is for sure. Yeah, but the idea that what in Islam, if somebody has premarital sex, what happens? Uh, if it's if they're not married, the both people are not married, they get lashed. Yeah, uh, but if so, one of them is married, is death penalty? You stoned. So it appears like this in Judaism as well, but they took that from rabbinic Judaism. Almost everything in Islam was taken from what we call the oral law. I mean, Muslims, I doubt, you know. Uh, invented much in terms of legality right i mean they took it from another system which is the rabbinic system yeah i mean jews do the same thing you're married you're stoned right uh only i'm pretty sure islam is islam runs like this as well if a man who's married sleeps with a woman who's not his wife but is not married to another man it is is that considered adultery in islam yeah, the man gets stoned, the woman gets lashed. Huh? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, wait. wait. So if you're married and you sleep with somebody yeah. else, then you get you get you get death stoned. But if the person if you're not married, you don't get stoned. You understand what I'm saying? No, no. If the man is married, but the woman he sleeps with is not married, but he himself has to be happens to be married with a woman, he gets stoned? Hello? Hello? Yeah, hi. Do you hear me? Yeah, do you hear me? I mean, did you hear my question? Oh, man. I'm telling you, it was just getting good. Oh, I think he's coming back on. All right. Okay. Let's just wait for screw. Oh. you hear me? All right. Yeah, so I'm going to ask my question again because I'm pretty sure Islam must function in the same manner because um, the idea of marriage in Islam is almost identical to Judaism, meaning that 
Islam allows for polygamy and Judaism, at least according to the legal code, allows for um, for polygamy. No one does it nowadays. Okay, you know, and nobody hit me up because I'm not looking for an extra wife. Um, in Judaism, because a man is allowed to have more than one wife. If a man happens to sleep with a woman who's not his wife and she is not married to anyone else, that itself is not called adultery. If the woman happens to be married to another man, then that is called adul adultery. So being that in Islam that a man, a Muslim man could take more than one wife, it's kind of a gray area to say that if a man sleeps with a woman who's not his wife, uh, even though he's married and she's not, that he gets stoned. No, it's because in Islam, you can have up to four wives, right? But in order for a woman to be your wife, number one, she, uh, her father has to accept. You have to have a, a walima, which is like a, 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 a dinner or something, where at least three, uh, I think it's three witnesses, at the bare minimum, three witnesses, and then a contract, and then a dowry, and then consummation. All of that before you get, so a woman becomes your wife, right? Now, if you sleep with a woman and you haven't, you didn't do that. Her dad didn't agree. You didn't take her hand in marriage. None of that stuff. You get stoned. If you're so, a man, does Islam have the notion of concubines? Uh, yes. Uh, during wartime. Only during wartime. Yes. So uh -huh. during the wartime, uh, you it's called right hand possession. But uh, once the war is over, they have to be negotiated back for like prisoners of war, things like that. Or offered to marry. It's, it's virtuous to marry the, the right hand. So if a Muslim man went to a prostitute, he's liable to the death penalty? Yes. If he's Are married, sure? yes. If he's married, yes. That's hard to believe. That's hard. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I, that it, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. I mean, you know, like the whole belly dancing thing came from the Islamic world, right? No, this was pre-Islamic Arabia, the belly dance thing. But it, it's strictly forbidden in Islam. Prostitution is strictly forbidden. Um, to, even to sell your... This is why the right-hand possession, it's illegal to sell them to prostitution. And your concubine, it can only be yours. You can't give them to nobody. Because like, back then, they used to like, you know, sell them out. I'll tell you. But they typically say this about Jews. Like, two Jews, three opinions. With Islam... It's been like, you know, like three Muslims, eight opinions, because every time I ask a Muslim like a question, uh, he has like a different response. There was um, I was on a show and I asked the Muslim guy, are Muslims are allowed to marry Catholics? And he told me no. And I never heard of this. Was he correct? Um, for the most part, um, okay, so in general, Muslims are allowed to marry people of the book, right? Jews and right. Christians. However, some people consider the Christians of today not as like monotheists. They consider them uh, pa uh, pagans because if you believe in the Trinity, they think you, they consider you like uh, paganism or idolatry or polytheism, right? Yeah, it's, um, not just, it's not just today. I mean, Christians have, be have been believing in the Trinity from even the time of Islam. Yeah, so it's different. Different people have different uh, opinions uh, in terms of Christianity. The majority say like Christians are allowed um, people of the scripture, uh, but that's like uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. For the, like the most part, they say yeah, but I mean, some people say they're idolaters. They only they, there's like there's like Christians that are called Nazarenes that don't believe Jesus is God. Yeah, that's but not in the, the time. Way the Quran no, they are. Wait, Even wait. in the Quran, that's what they describe that. And in the Quran, when it talks about Christians, the Christians are called Nasara. Like the Jews are called Yehud, and the Christians are Nasara. Nasara literally means Nazarenes. Yeah, no, in Hebrew, uh, I mean, it's like Yeshu HaNotri. Yeah, but that just, Notrim in Hebrew just means Christians. I mean, it's another word for Christian. I mean, the word Christian didn't exist back then. I mean, in terms of, of the English word. But that doesn't mean that they're what the modern group of Nazarenes are today. The idea of Christians being Unitarian is something new, especially in the Middle East. So I think that Christians, because of Clubhouse and TikTok, or Muslims because of these platforms, have begun to hate Christians so much that now they're saying that the only Christian they're willing to marry is what they call a Unitarian Christian, which is also a new term because the old term for Unitarian was the old Unitarian Church, which was not uh, you know, someone necessarily who believes that, that Jesus is not God. 
So, um, and it's hard for me to believe that a Muslim who visits a prostitute is, is stoned to death. And I'm going to Google it right now. I trust you, but I need to verify. Okay. If a Muslim visits a prostitute, let me ask Rabbi Google here. Google, Sheikh Google. Sheikh, I mean, I've I've started to use ChatGPT a lot. I mean, this freaking awesome. Oh, bro, I'm stuff. big on ChatGPT. I'm very big. GPT four is way better when it comes to like uh, in depth. Uh, okay, let's see. Quran orders a hundred lashes for both men and women who have sex without marriage. Okay, that's what you said. Uh, can it permissible? Prostitution is considered haram in Islam. So, okay, yeah, but that doesn't tell me what the punishment is. Hold on. And these women, to an extent, are marginalized, invisible. If a woman is enslaved, according to sh Sharia, it is permissible for her master to have intercourse with her. Uh, so I guess that's what you're talking about. Uh, that. In that case, she would be the concubine. So your penalty in Islam will prevent. Uh, let me see. It, it doesn't say, I mean, so far, I haven't seen anything that says that like a Muslim man who visits a prostitute is, 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 is uh, you know, unalived. Well, what website are you on? I'm just on Google. I mean, there's a bunch of them here. ChatGPT. Okay, because there's a Shia website. Shias they have a thing called Musa, which is. Ah, like uh, here you marriage. go. Um, You're disrespecting my Shia brothers. Well, you're Sunni. No, I mean it's their actual belief. I'm just not Shia. Mm. I mean, it's just the belief they have. You understand? Know but it's not. So if it's not in the Quran or the authentic teachings of the Prophet, it's just hearsay. You understand? Know what do you like a Kurd? No, you're a Kurd. Huh? Are you a Kurd? Huh? Kurd. Oh, I'm Cassius Clay. You don't remember me? Oh, Cassius Clay. Well, he converted to yeah, Islam. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm Cassius Clay. Oh, yeah, Gash. I'm Sudanese. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I told you oh, this before. Huh? Oh, I'm from Sudan. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Idi yeah. Amin. I mean, uh, that he would eat his opponents. Oh, yeah, yeah. If he wasn't a Sudanese. Well, he was a Muslim because he... Like, no, he ran away. Amin was Ugandan. Uh, no, he's Ugandan. Ah, oh, I got it confused. Oh, there's yeah, this good Sudan movie is. about... With the Gerald Butler. It, it's called... Um, it's called Machine Gun Preacher. That he goes there... and never heard of it. Yeah, Sudan is where they have that, that war with the Lord's Army and that guy who they say is invincible. What's his name? Um, ooh, something... <laughs> No, no, that's 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 Uganda too. Either Uganda or, or uh, yeah, Sudan. Sudan is there's nothing. No, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Sudan. Oh. There's nothing. There's nothing significant about us. Yeah, it's the Lord's Resistance Army. I mean, it's in Sudan. No way, Lord Resistance Army is uh, George, uh, Joe, uh, was John, K James Coney or Jones Coney? Yeah, 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 Coney. That's not yeah. Sudan. That's yeah, not Sudan. Sudan. No way. I'm looking at it. The LRA. Man, you don't know your own country. That's no way. It's not. That's not Sudan. No one knows. All right. Here, ask Sheikh uh, Google. That's it. There's it might no be way. one of your cousins. I don't know. Uh, no, but it's, it's me South that Sudan. Is not Colombia. Huh? Because my family's is from it? Colombia. My family's from Colombia. Yeah, it's like telling me that Pablo Escobar is like Peruvian. Or like me saying. Oh, <laughs> There's no way, bro. A lower distance army. Hold on a second. There's no way. It's not Sudan. The Sudan is. South Sudan is a new country. North Sudan is all Muslim. The lower distance army is like Uganda. Or Congo or something. Well, I mean, Google doesn't lie, bro. You know what? It's crazy. Here, um, here, type it in ChatGPT. Yeah, see if he's like an Islamophobe. <laughs> nah, ChatGPT is liberal. Yeah, yeah. No, it won't make fun of Islam, by the way. You know? Yeah, because it knows. Like, yes, it knows. I mean, say like, Islamic joke. I, I mean, it'll like shut down. But Christians, it can make fun of. 
Yeah, it's woke. And God protected it. And that's it. Uh, what, what were you saying? Oh, yeah, but yeah, you can't sleep with All right, anyways. Enough for the, you know, Islamic education. I'm going to let more people in here. But thanks for stopping yeah, by. Yeah. All, right, right, right. All right, but thank Always you. Always good talking to you, man. You stay safe. Yeah, likewise. Take it easy. Bye. All right, guys. Let's keep it going. All right. Let's uh, hop into some of these questions. Can you empire to a single learner creates a religious family? See now, okay. Do you have any African somewhere in your family line? Are you talking about me? Uh, if you are, I do, by the way. I mean, I don't look a little black. See my dad. My dad's like very black. I mean, he looks like Hindu, like really dark. And my mom's very white. So I came out, whatever. If I stay out in the sun, I get very dark. But I did the... Um, Ancestry.com, and it came out that I'm 8% African. So, I'm 8% from different African countries, I guess that's how we do it. And I came out 3% Jewish, very small, but it was like the majority from like Spain and Portugal and uh, Italy. Let's see. Mm, I guess I was going to leave way to cheat on their wives. That's actually not so true, I guess, uh, to respond to Simply Live 77. I would say that Jews probably have a lower divorce rate, uh, you know, per capita than than christians and muslims do um the truth is most most orthodox jews or most jews don't know much about judaism um especially orthodox jews this, i'm just like a database of useless information i have just i'm like an investigative reporter about judaism so i have to know how it functions and also as someone who debates judaism i think i'm the only one who debates in behalf of judaism um so people are shocked to hear what judaism actually teaches because I have to be well-rounded on all these things, but this is what it actually says. But no, most Jews don't feel like it's okay to cheat on your wife like that. And most Jews are not polygamous. Weren't Jews in the army of Alexander the Great? I don't think so. I know Alexander the Great is highly regarded in the Jewish world. There's a lot of Jews named Alexander because of that. The The Yiddish version is Sender. Uh, if there's people who have the name Sender, they're named after their granddad or something, it's because of Alexander. But I don't, I mean, I assume there could have been Jews in his army, but who knows? How did you get into the, how did you get into Kirov in Israel? So, yeah, I used to work for someone named, uh, I still work for him, by the way, but now I do it for America. But now, I mean, I just run his website. I do graphics for him. But in Israel, um, I did a work in Kirov for Jeff Seidel in Hebrew University. Uh, when I was learning in Aish in the old city, I was looking for more money to make. So somebody suggested, uh, no, no. My rabbi here in Florida told me to go see Jeff Sadow, I mean, for anything he needed, uh, like, I mean, or for anything I needed. And um, I saw that he needed help in the office, and I started helping around. And then that's it. I've been with the guy for, I mean, I've known him over 14 years. And that's how you do it. Yeah. You know, and then I started doing my own thing. Why do Jews not believe in hell, but Muslims and Christians do? Jews do believe in hell, by the way. The average Jew believes in hell. Rabbinic literature is full of notions of hell. I'm, I just said that it just doesn't literally appear in the Torah. I mean, that's what it is. So it seems that you're not commanded to believe in it. But, I mean, yeah, most Jews do. Um, let's see. I converted after I found out my ancestors were conversals. I loved it. I don't think that's the best reason to convert. Because that means if you found out that your ancestors were Muslims, would you convert to Islam? So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's still good that you converted. Good morning from, oh, my friend, uh, West Indies Legionnaire. Cool. Hi. Is there a Jewish community in Colombia? Yes. There's actually a pretty large Jewish community in different places in Bogota. In the capital, Bogota, I, I was there for Purim, actually. It's a very nice community in an area called El Chico. Uh, there's a big Chabad and stuff like that. But all the major ones... Cali has a, a community. Barranquilla has a community. Yes. And you'd be surprised. It's mostly Ashkenazim. It's people who came like after World War II. But there are like Syrians and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, the, the Jewish communities in Spanish countries suck because they don't allow Gentiles to attend. There is a security guard at the door. And if you're not Jewish, they don't let you in. And it's like this in the vast majority of the world. Because... They don't have conversions in South America because of the state of Israel. So because of that, what's the point of them letting Gentiles in, in their mind? And 
I, I, I think these people are garbage to do that. There's many, many good people who want to become Jewish and they're not let into the synagogue. I mean, even if they say, look, I want to be a Noahide, they're still not let in. And I'm pretty sure there's probably people watching me now from somewhere there that could testify to this. Now, I've been there. The way they let me in, I called and I, you know, I talked to them and I explained that I'm Jewish and stuff like that. And they would let me in after I spoke to the rabbi. Yeah, I never been to Medellin. Like I've been to Bogota, I've been to Cali, I've been, and I. Uh, that's it. Uh, my, my family's in Barranquilla, but I never been there. I studied with a rabbi from Colombia. Okay, uh, so there was. I mean, I met Rabbi Goldschmidt. I've met Rabbi Rosenfeld. Rabbi, yeah, I mean, these are rabbis from Chabad. What's the name of the rabbi from Colombia? See if I know. Him. In the Old Testament, the, what? Is the Old Testament the complete Torah? No, it is not. Um, the Torah is only the five books of Moses. It's really only the commandments within the five books of Moses. The other books are not considered the Torah. Dude, there's no God. Or the, okay, nah. Reading this. If you tell them you are an Israeli, they'll let you in. That's, uh, I, okay. I mean, I'll take your word for it. Because my friend, the West Indies guy, has been to all these countries. He lived in Panama for a while. Uh, but maybe if you tell them you're Israeli and you speak Hebrew. Uh, but yeah, I had friends who at least in Colombia went with a like, shrimo and everything and they wouldn't let them in. Oh, huh. so Marissa, I actually debated him. If if you go onto my channel on YouTube, just type in Asher Meza and type in his name. And it wasn't such a pleasant debate. It was, we kind of, I don't know, I mean, he got offended very easily. So he is a conservative rabbi. I mean, he's a nice guy, but he, I don't know, he, he got very offended. And when people get offended, they lose their cool and they don't come out on top. How can I get on a call with you? Um, Give me a call. I mean, DM me. Uh, give me a call. DM me and I'll give you my number. Let's see. I was raised by non-Jews, then I found out DNA, and I'm half Jewish on my father's side. Okay, I'm look. I I converted to Judaism. Blood is completely, completely in, insignificant. Yeah, in, in my opinion. So, however, if if it means something to you, that's what matters. I like I said, my family's from Colombia. Um, before that, from Spain, uh, Italy, and um, I. I'd like to visit all those places. I don't, I don't feel whatever. I, I, I like the smell of Colombian food because that's what I grew up eating. But besides that, I don't think it's, uh, Oh, you emailed me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so bad at responding to people's emails. Let me double check here. Uh, if you did, you didn't email me by that name. Arepa, pues. Okay, Colombia is a beautiful country. Yes, yes, it is. I'm actually, good thing you remind me, I'm getting my Colombian citizenship. I'm applying for it this week because I'm eligible because my parents are from Colombia. Does being Jewish help you in the marathon the other day? <laughs> well, it's funny. So, let me see. I just got... Where's the... Look, this is one medal. I got this one three weeks ago, but this is a half. But this weekend... I ran another one. Now, this one wasn't a, a marathon, but it was a 10K. And I don't know how being Jewish would help me. But it was a lot of Jews there. Just because South Florida, baby. That's how we do it. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I skipped your question. Let's see what your question was. Can a lesbian, can I be a lesbian and Jewish? Hmm. That's, oh, crap. sorry. That's an interesting uh, question. All right. Lesbianism is not prohibited in the Torah. It is prohibited according to the oral law. The oral law calls it, um, it, it calls it Der Hamori 
which is like what they used to, what the Ammonites used to do, and also like practices that were done in Mitzrayim, like um, the yeah, like the paganism that was found amongst Egyptians. The Torah doesn't doesn't prohibit it. I'm not a Karite. I believe in halacha, so I'm just telling you what it is. Can you be Jewish? Look, if you wanted to convert to Judaism and you were a lesbian, just keep it quiet. That's it. Just. I believe in the Talmud. I believe in the Talmud Yerushalmi, where it states that after three generations without practicing. Uh, what does it mean? That after three generations without practicing, you're no longer Jewish? Is that what you're saying? I have many questions about that. That's your show. Um, yeah, Stacy, you're welcome to. Well, you don't have enough people there. You need it up. You need at least a thousand followers to to hop on the show. But um, yeah, just DM me and I'll send you my number. How to convert? Go to your local synagogue, local, preferably Orthodox synagogue, um, and tell the rabbi that you're interested. As a matter of fact, well, first of all, just let me remind you guys: like the show i see people liking it already keep liking it and uh hopefully we'll get more interesting um conversations going on um this is um hold on okay marissa you said you emailed me a week ago but under what name because i just typed in marissa just give me another name and i'll respond to it is it oh wait a minute no i said it so this is the challenge that I make you, to you guys every week. This Saturday, plan for it. Look, it's Monday now. right? John Wick just came out. I'm going to check out John Wick tomorrow. This Saturday, go to your local synagogue around 945. Okay? Park a few blocks down. Dress to impress. Leave your phone in your car. And uh, if you're a guy, you're probably better off ordering a kippa, right? All of this is going to be a box there. On Amazon, you could order a kippa now. You'll get it by Friday. And uh, sit in the men's section if you're a man. Sit in the women's section if you're a woman. Do what they do. And at the end, just go up to the rabbi, shake your hand, say, look, I'm I'm just from the community. I, I, I just wanted to experience a Sabbath and see what you were doing here, whatever, this and that. I'm pretty sure they'll be happy to have you. And just come back here and tell me how your experience went. And I think it'll be a huge power move. It's like, you know, don't be shy. I mean, don't let being shy stop you from making new friends and possibly changing your life around by converting. They say that every day you should do something that scares you, at least, you know, and that's how you keep progressing. So man up, Israel. Okay. Let's see. Does being Jewish help you in the marathon? No. How to convert? I'm reading these questions. I have many questions I would like to ask you in your show. Well, ask them here, and then I'll try to answer them. I believe in the... Okay, one second. They would call me the car... What? Oh, Cortez. Hold on, I'm sorry. Let me see if I got this email. Uh, no? I don't see your email. Oh, uh, what message did... Or, Where'd you email me? There's no synagogue here in my town. Okay, that's a problem. That's a problem. Let's see. Oh, see. West Indies, you're saying that according to Tom Yershami, if you're disconnected three generations, you have to dip into Mecca uh, without conversion. Well, then that would be the conversion. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. So that requires what's called the conversion. The Khumra. I I would like to see that. I mean, I would like to see where that appears because I'm not familiar with that. I'm not Jewish, but I have been to a synagogue a few times, always warm and welcoming. Okay, all right, that's how you do it. I live in Pennsylvania, but in New York, there's a couple big synagogues that allow you. I mean, they should they should all allow you pretty much. Uh, go to your local Chabad. I don't know. There's a lot of those. A bunch of um, young Israels all over the place. Okay, um, you know what, on that note, guys, I think that we covered a lot. So let's go ahead and just end for tonight. Thanks for keeping it interest, interesting with the questions, and thank you for everybody who came on the panel. And uh, yeah, go to my channel on YouTube, 
subscribe and thank you thank you for uh making this live very meaningful okay be welcome